So you're really fast at building 3D models in SketchUp and Rhino, but you think an atmospheric hand rendering would sell your design better than a SketchUp scene. Even if you're good at hand renderings, how are you going to create one that's sexy enough in time for tomorrow's client meeting? If you present just the finished looking SketchUp view, the client's either going to love it and want to start building before you've developed the design, or not like it and feel like you didn't listen to them. Well, never fear. It's times like this when a hand rendering combining Procreate and SketchUp can help you create a quick hand rendering that's sexy enough to sell your design, but vague enough to maintain your design options. So in this video, we'll create not one, but three quick seductive renderings that anyone can learn to do combining SketchUp and Procreate. So here's my SketchUp model, and I've got a bunch of scenes I've created. And I'm settling on this scene here, but I want to take the um, shading out and make it just a line drawing because that's what I'm going to import into Procreate. So I go to the Styles tab in the menu, and I am going to come up here and change from Default Styles to Sketchy Edges. And what I do here is I always go to the same one. I start because of the red here, but I back away from the red and I finally end up on the pen gray model. Now that's the beginning of a decent line drawing and that sort of looks like the way I've learned to do my line drawings anyway, but I go into the edit section and I go to the level of detail and you can see that I didn't have all the detail in that first. So I'm gonna play with that slider so I can see these patio uh, articulated lines and things like that. I can always erase later in Procreate, but I'm going to adjust that and I'm going to come up here to the extensions and that's going to appear in the various intersections of the lines. And I'm going to get that where I want it. I don't generally like to have a lot of overlap, but I'll put that at about a two or something. And you can see the difference that made. And when I'm comfortable with all that, I head over to the file menu. So I go to export 2D graphic. There's a little button down here called options. And this line scale multiplier will determine the final look of the line drawing, how thick the lines are. And I just, by default, make it a 2x line. And I'm going to mention that here when I store this over or save this over to iCloud. I want to remember what I've done. So I'm going to go and, and include that 2x postscript in my title. So you can see that here now. I'm coming into my iCloud drive and I find the test with a 2x appendage and I'll just hit the space bar and pull that up and that looks about right. So now I import the view from iCloud Drive into Procreate and the first thing I'm going to do is double that layer of the line drawing to make it darker and then I'm actually going to do the um, winter view first because I found this wonderful uh, rendering from a guy named Andre Prindy and I'm going to actually borrow his palette uh, without copying him, but I'm going to borrow his palette because I know it works so well to create this mood and this kind of winter feeling. And I do this by tapping on the color up on the top right and tapping the plus sign to create a new palette, tapping the brush, and then using the sample button here on the left side to um, tap on the screen with the pencil and pick up these colors one at a time. I go back up to the palette menu and I drop these colors in one at a time. So I'm going to go get that white value first and then one of these warm yellow values in the middle. Pick that up, place it in there and I'll go all the way through the rest of them. And this gives me a palette that I know works to create this kind of winter effect drawing. And I, I see this as a positive kind of borrowing. And again, I want to thank Andre Prindy for these great colors. And so I position one of his renderings. I've switched the one I'm using, but I position it next to me and I start to kind of imitate the trees that he's done because of that wonderful minimal feeling that they have. I'm following the perspective of the house as I go. I'm going to continue now with the rest of the site around the house, put the field stone wall in in the back, kind of frame the view with additional trees up front. And these were drawn a little more carefully. And I want to put some planning around the house. The next big move is to go refer back to one of those renderings again 
And I'm going to add this uh, lighting effect to all the windows in a single layer at first. I'm going to add a new layer here in the Layers palette. I'm going to select the Freehand Selection Mode. And I'm basically going to go through and grab all of these areas where you see the windows. And I'll speed that up in a moment. But uh, I'll select them all. I'll continue selecting onto the same layer. And once they're all selected, I'll drop in that lightest of the yellow lights that we saved from Andre's palette. And that's the basis for the rest of the lighting. We're going to add a little bit more character, uh, a few more warmer, darker tones. But just I start with the selection and then start with that lightest of the yellow tones. And you can see how that builds up and... Um, really creates this marvelous interior effect. Now I think these interior lights look great, but to complete the illusion, the real killer effect is to create a new layer, go with a soft brush. Now go back to the darkest of the colors you saved from the Andre Prendy sketch and just lightly brush on that dark color outside. And when you put that color on top of the kind of midnight blue, twilight effect we've already started it really makes this whole thing sing and uh, I can even come in here and select a piece of this to get a little more precision and then brush that in try to be a little heavier at the point where the light first hits the chimney but you can see how that really sets up this twilight effect now the next thing we're going to do is put in these shadows cast by the light in the house and that's going to give it this twilight effect let me show you what I, how I do this in the uh, daytime sketch first. I'm going to go into, after making a different layer, I'm going to go into the freehand selection method. And you've seen this in other videos I've done. It's a very liberating way to draw. You just start making these shapes and they end up having a kind of a, almost a silk screen effect or a Warner Brothers cartoon or Disney cartoon effect. But select the area, and I'm drawing roughly in perspective. I'm making freehand gestures around the base of each of these trees. But the gestures I'm making are sort of elliptical so that they actually look like the shadows that the trees might cast. And I'm not going to worry about the house right now. I'm going to go right behind the house or make sure the layer's behind the house later on. And I'm going to complete this all the way around, come down to this bottom right tree, and then I just circle all the way back around and connect it to the original dot. And once I do that, I've got this selection you can see, and I'm going to drop in this cooler green color and just use the old layer command, do the fill layer. And you can adjust that layer to your heart's content. It's also interesting to use the same freehand selection technique to come in and erase out parts of the color where it's too heavy. Because of course, in the uh, edge of a forest, you're gonna have light that comes down through the trees in lots of random ways. So that's the basic uh, technique involved in creating these shadows. So the shadows cast by the house and the forest and the lights in the windows and that single monotone background are really all you need to create this uh, winter moonlight effect. I'm using the number one technical pen again to add some more texture back in this planting now that I have a kind of a color base for the planting that I like. And you can see by the flickering nature of this video right now that I'm going back in, I'm looking back at the reference, I'm adjusting all kinds of layers to try and build up and maximize this sort of winter moonlight effect. So now let's uh, take this apart and do the day rendering. I'm going to go through this quickly, but the basic idea here is to use these layers as a real advantage. So I will actually duplicate the entire drawing. And then on a new drawing or new canvas, I'll start the daytime version. And I'll eliminate that blue background first and start one by one to replace these major layers with the colors as they would appear in daytime. So you see I've got the grass surrounding, a more naturalistic version of the driveway. I'm struggling here, but I'm finding the right color for the blue windows. I've got the shrubs in, 
And that's it for the day rendering. So just by replacing those colors, I get that effect. Now to create the third and final version of this for the moonlight version, I'm going to just take the top layer and fill it with a blue violet in multiply mode. And I'm going to adjust that in hue, saturation and brightness until it has just the right effect. Then I'm going to take the layer that was the layer of lights and put it on top above that new twilight layer that I've just created and then go through with the same operation, replace each shadow with a version that uh, looks better or works better with a new kind of blue violet overall effect. And um, again, it's about a 10 or 15 minute operation. I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm not starting a new rendering. I'm just saving the daytime file and coming in with these basic changes. And I encourage you to use any kind of um, inspiration image you can find. Images from art history. Just Google images for twilight or moonlight effect and borrow the colors right from there. Be sure to check out the description below for links to the brushes, grids, scales, and even FF&E templates I use. And thanks for watching, folks.